like, oh, Lord, help me, oh, God, to be more considerate, to, more, to be so, um, to be more unselfish because we can, you know, we can get into a mode where it's, it's, it's all about us, but it's not all about us. It's, it's about, it's about Jesus. So this has made me think about certain things, how we are and how we have to get out of that, you know, how we have to, um, you know, if, if Jesus was to come, um, walk this world, this earth right now, and mm -hmm. walk down your street, a lot of people won't recognize him because people, they have this, this, this image of him that, you know, he's so this and he's so that, but he came meek and holy. He didn't have no desire. He wasn't even a, a good looking, you know, so. And, and God wants us to get to a point where we, we decrease, you know, he need to increase in us and we can't, we won't be able to help others until we decrease and get ourselves out the way. And so I think that's what the, the problem we're facing. And so we have to get ready because something is coming. Something is coming here, but the only way we're going to make it is we hold on to his hand. And, 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 and when you made this comparison about how the world is going, the world is supposed to do that. But why is the church practicing the same thing? They're supposed to act the way they act. And why would the church get entangled with something like this and take sides with something like this when we're supposed to be out there uh, uh, preaching and teaching healing and reconcil reconciliation? When we become a part of the division, Jesus stood right there in the middle and let him know about that he was building his kingdom. We start fighting. Why why you vote for this and why you vote? You know what? Number one, number two, I I I you don't look at parties, you don't look at all that, you look at fairness and you look at the, the what other people will not have advantage of what you would have. And because that will give you an advantage, that don't make you support it. It makes you just as evil and a part of it as the rest of them. Now people trying to come out, oh, well, you know, we didn't trying to get out of it because it's looking ugly. Mm -hmm. And it's looking ugly because so-called Christians got involved where they shouldn't have. The world is supposed to think that way. But if I have a Christian operating in a position, I, I expect them to stand up for the right thing. We got people, and that's what I'm talking about. We're supposed to be displaying Christ in everything we do. Every job I had, I did not have to compromise. And I, I tell you the truth, I got a promotion everywhere I went because I stuck with my principles. I was even told I couldn't do certain things. I wasn't breaking their laws. If I go on my own break, I can do what I want on my own break. I'm not on your clock. And if people follow me, I can say what I want to say. And there's no need of running back and saying what I said. Because you asked for it and because you couldn't defeat me in the word, you tried to get me fired. I went through all that, but I didn't get fired. Because I knew that that same door that opened for me there will open somewhere else. And I do not have to compromise my principles and my belief in order for me to be successful. <clears throat> and that's what some of us do. We hide who we are. And, the, and, the, and, and it should be built, all right? It should be built. And, and uh, like Melissa Marie was saying, some, some of us, we live pretty good. I mean, we live in the nice places. Even some of the poor got nice apartments and stuff. But we never think once that there's some people that don't have any shelter at all. We never stop to think. We never stop to call agencies and see what we can help with the money we're blowing and do another thing. We we don't we don't go and see how can I help? Is that something I can do to help to help the poor to help the people? And while you're helping the people, they're going to look at you and they're going to remember you for that. And as you go out and help people, that makes them want to come to the ministry. They don't want to hear what's coming out of your mouth when you're not there for them. Some people want to assume my name right now. A lot of people just call me Mama His. It's just got to be my name. I say I was being called that before I got old enough, and I'm old, and everybody yes. called him Mama His because yes. they looked at me. It followed me. I didn't tell them to call me that. If I have to tell you to call, I have to make myself be called something. I didn't earn it. You earn it because generations of people 
have been touched by you. And your ministry, they saw it in your fruit, not your mouth. Too much mouth in the church and no work. You don't deserve to be called those things until you earn those things. So when you try to push yourself, people go, oh, they'll be talking behind your back. They'll, they'll smile and grin when you're there, but mm, they came to do nothing for me. This is talking about you were taking care of your family. You let me lay it down. Uh, Ms. Marie, you might want to say something. Let me be quiet. Go ahead. You want to say something? Y'all ain't moving fast enough. You know I'll start talking. So you better jump in. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, it's it's something when when you do try to like just with this this last thing with someone that stole my identity. And everyone who said they was like, no, that don't sound like you. I immediately deleted it. And I thank God for that because some of the people I ain't seen or heard from in eight years, but they knew my voice don't sound like that imposter that had tried to steal that. They were like, no. And it sounded good what they were trying to say, but they was like, no, that don't sound like you. And I just I just thank God for that because sometimes you don't think you leave. An impression on people. You think you 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 doing and you doing and you think they don't listen or they're not caring or they don't want to hear you, but it showed me that they did. And it was the ones you at least expect, the ones that give me the most opposition. Sometimes there was the ones like, oh, I know that wasn't you. And I said, oh my God, I'm, I'm glad to hear from you. You knew that wasn't me. Well, God bless you, because we in our the daily lives that we live are being examined. And that's why it says consider your ways because you're not living just for you. We're living for God, for them to see the little bit of Jesus that we do have. If we are always in the forefront, he never is seen. We have to consider how we live, how we speak to people, the people we work with, how are we treating them? If we don't stop and consider that, maybe I should have did that right. I should have apologized. I should do this. I did that wrong. And go back and fix it. It's one thing to know you did wrong, but you got to fix some things. Some things you got to go back and fix. And God showed me that real early. And I just said, God, you know, I don't want to do that. He said, you got to go back to all the people you told this false information to and correct it. And I had to gather up a whole group of people at one time. This was at work. And I said, okay, when I said Friday was wrong, y'all, God showed me Sunday that I was wrong. And here's the parts I was wrong at. I couldn't do that. And it sounded good. And they were always like, yeah, yeah, that's right. But I was wrong. And I said, you got to go fix that. Mm -hmm. And I did. And that's the part of being humble, too. Sometimes you know you got to apologize and humble, but you don't do it. You just ain't going to do it. But God, he draws closer to those that are of a contrite spirit, those that want to do better. Sometimes, yeah, we mess up. We mess up every day. But if you want to try to do better, God is there to help you. But if you see that you've done wrong and you never go back to fix it, you, oh, I'm just going to go on from here. No, some things have got to be repaired because we have caused the damage. No one else can come back and fix the mess that you made. you got to fix it. Because they were listening to you. They were watching you. Right. When you right. fell down, you got to tell me, you know what, what I did on, that mean that was wrong. And I had to do it so much. I said, God, please, I'm so tired of apologizing that word. Help me with my spirit. One time he kept me away from people. He told me, he said, no, you wasn't right. I couldn't let them see you. And it was like, I've been trying to get to you. I was like, I wasn't right them days. When I got right, they was right at my door. God, he, people are watching you. They're looking for Jesus. They don't even know it. And someone will tell you, I don't know why I'm old. You know, and God knows. But take advantage of that. Don't brush that off as a small thing or a light thing. Because sometimes you just are planting a seed. You're not the one that's going to reap the harvest, but you're planting a seed. Someone else is going to come along and water. Someone else is going to shine some sun on it. But you've got to continuously plant some seeds. And one day we will reap a harvest. But you can't, if you're not working, the harvest will die. The seeds that you planted will die. You've got to go back and put some water on them. 
You got to go back and encourage that little plant and pull out those little weeds that's getting around it and talk to it and prep it up and put some more dirt in it and make it sturdy. That's what we have to do. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's our job. We're supposed to be tilling. We are the workers. You can't get a harvest by just throwing out a bunch of seeds. And Mr. Williams was bringing up the how the ground is. Some of you know if you got some, if you know you're working with someone that is some hard ground, you got to go till that thing every day. You got to say, oh, hold on. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Because that the soil will come up, the rocks are crushing, but it's a precious seed. And that little seed is going to grow if we nurture it. It needs nurturing. But we we real like, look, I got mine, you get. <laughs> That's a fallacy if you think that you grew on your own. God said, just like Eden with Saul, he sent it to somebody. And so ended, Paul ended up being the writer of a lot of epistles, but he didn't start that way. He had to go to Ananias. He had to walk on it. He was doing wrong. He, it was a lot of people that poured into him. Mm. And he was obedient. And when he came back, he spoke the same way they did. That's how they said, oh, we know you've been with Jesus. You speak like we do, but that took time. It didn't happen overnight. It took nurturing and teaching. But you've got to be a willing vessel to receive the teaching. You can't just brush it off. Well, I don't feel like it right now. I'm going to get myself together. No, get yourself together now. I used to love when oh, Overseer Hicks would call and say, will you get yourself together? I'm like, I'm trying. no, get yourself together. It's in your power to do it. You can't keep pushing it off to, I'm going to do it on Monday. I'm going to do it on, okay, when the first of the month come. Okay, when this, when the high moon, y'all got all kind of, just like you started on the diet. You know, you better sit when you, when it comes to your mind, start right then. Don't put it off till Monday because you're going to get to it. When Monday come, oh, it's raining. Oh, it's this. Oh, I'm depressed. I'm going to need to eat this ice cream. I'm going to start on Tuesday. Then by the end of the week, you have already lost another week. And that enemy has diverted you for a whole week yeah. you know at the beginning after sunday service you're like oh oh come monday i'm gonna be praying i'm gonna fast i'm gonna read my word and we let it go by okay the next week ooh, i'm enthusiastic again i'm gonna get in there and then you go oh. we got a lot of false starts but it's time to start and keep running sometimes you gotta hold your side and breathe a little bit i understand but you can't just get out of the race altogether. Ain't no sitting on the sidelines to just watching other people make laps. Hold your side, get your bottle of water, and get back to running. There's no rest for the weary. Get back to running. Yeah. I want everybody to respond to what Minister Williams, I have said, or whatever. Let us know what you're feeling about all this. Come on and, and respond. That's why I put that in the chat. We want you to respond in the chat with a hallelujah. Uh, amen. Each time these ministers speak, we want you to do it. I just started doing it, even though Mr. Williams had already said some good things. I didn't think about it till now. Let me see your response in the chat.